Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 4, Transcendental Knowledge, text number 36. Nothing on the board. Maybe it has a virus. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's close. <laughs> Four thirty-six. Api chadasi pa pebya. Sarve vyak papa maha. Sarvam jnana plane viva. Ridinam santarishasi. Api chadasi pa pebya. Sarve vyak papa krita maha. Sarvam kyana plane vainaiva. Ridinam santarishasi. Api chadasi pape vya. Sarve vyak papa krita maha. Sarvam jnana plane viva. Ridinam santarishasi. Ladies. Api chadasi pape vya. Sarve vya papa krita maha. Sarvam jnana plane viva. Santarishasi. Api, even, chat, if, asi, you are. Papebya, of sinners. Sarvebya, of all. Papakrita Maha, the greatest sinner. Sarvam, all such sinful reactions. Jnana plane plavena. By the boat of transcendental knowledge. Eva, certainly. Rijinam, the ocean of miseries. Santarishasi, you will cross completely. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami to the Prabhupada. Even if you are considered to be the most sinful of all sinners, when you are situated in the boat of transcendental knowledge, you'll be able to cross over the ocean of miseries. Purport. Proper understanding of one's constitutional position in relation to Krishna is so nice that it can at once lift one from the struggle for existence which goes on in the material ocean of nations. This material world is sometimes regarded as an ocean of nations and sometimes as a blazing fire. Forest. The ocean, however expert a swimmer may be, the struggle for existence is very severe. If someone comes forward and lifts the struggling swimmer from the ocean, he is the greatest savior. Perfect knowledge received from the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the path of liberation. The both boat of Krishna Kaja is very simple, but at the same time the most sublime. Even if you consider the most sinful of all sinners, when you are situated in the boat of transcendental knowledge, you'll be easily over you'll be easily be able to cross over the ocean material miseries. Mom Vishnu Vraya Krishna Prasai Buddha, Srimate Bhakti Virata Swami Tanamane. Namaste Sarasatunde Vangoravani Vicharne Nirvi Shesha Shrinivadi Paskatya De Siddharne. The root cause of all suffering is what? What's the root cause of all suffering? According to nectar devotion. What's that? Yeah, avidya. That's why everyone is suffering, because of avidya. Therefore, people, for instance, now that the coronavirus scare 
people are thinking I might even die. Said so some people have very have died. We there's some remote possibility I might die also. They don't realize that they can't die because they're eternal, and the body can't die because it's already dead. Something that's dead can't die. <laughs> so this is all due to avidya, ignorance, that people think they're going to die. Now the body, they have to leave the body at some time, whether today or tomorrow in 20 years. They have to leave the body. But due to ignorance, they think that when they leave their body, that they left something very valuable behind. The most important thing in the universe they are leaving behind. They don't consider what the body actually is. If they actually saw what was inside the body, they wouldn't mind leaving it behind. <laughs> but they have some conception that the covering of skin over the body is their real self. But this, the skin is only a fraction, it's some centimeters. If that's what they think, that's who they are, they're wrong. In any case, due to avidya, people are suffering. And the way of ending the avidya is not by quarantining everyone. That will not change anything. People will still be as ignorant as they were before. The only way of, is by to end their suffering is transcendental knowledge. Just like we ourselves, because we're in the bodily concept of life, we also have to suffer to some degree or another. But we're certainly not going to suffer to the same degree as everyone else who actually believes that with the end of this body, everything is finished. We have at least some conception that we're going to exist eternally. Therefore, we're not so much disturbed, as much disturbed at least, in proportion to our knowledge. Now, Krishna in Bhagavad Gita says that the body is changing, but the soul is not is eternal. Now, to some degree or another, we've understood that. And therefore, we have some realization. And people who haven't heard that, this simple philosophy, they're completely in anxiety and fear all the time, even if they're not aware of it. But without that knowledge, you must be in a fearful state of being. Therefore, it says, Bayam dviti yabi nevesha tasyad, ishada pitasya vi pariyosmiti. The material universe is based on fear. And the fear is, as soon as we turn a competitor to Krishna rather than his servant, then material nature will put us into fear. It's not we don't have a choice. Oh, would you like to be in ecstasy or fear? Oh, I'll choose fear. <laughs> it's, as soon as we turn our face away from Krishna, then the material nature puts us into a fearful state. And there's every reason to be fe fearful because we do the wrong thing here, then we'll become a grasshopper in our next lifetime. That's the way it works. If sometimes people say, I'm not afraid. Well, if I said I had a magic wand, I just touch you with it, you turn into a grasshopper. You know, would you like to step forward and become a grasshopper? Very few people will step forward. Because people don't know where they're going next. And, logically speaking, most of the species of life that people enter into are not human forms. So we may be eternal, so that's good to be eternal, but to be eternally in hell is not very good to be suffering eternally is not a very good choice. But people have made that choice. As a matter of fact, if you tell people the truth, they'll become very disturbed. And if you lie to them, then they'll actually think you're a great personality. If you tell them that this there is no reality, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, up Satyam apratishtam te jagara hora nishvaram aparashparam sambhutyam kemanyat kamahai to come. 
or before that he says, Pravitim cha nritim cha jana navida asura the sochim napicha chara na satim te shu vidyate. That the demoniac, they say, they don't know what's to be done and what's not to be done. Neither cleanliness nor truthfulness nor proper behavior is found in them. And they think that's completely normal. And if you tell them there's actually a reality and that they're obliged to follow it, they'll think you're a religious fanatic. You're taking away their freedom. That there's pravritim and nevritim. There's actually things that you're supposed to do and things you're not supposed to do. Of course, that may depend upon your particular situation in the modes of nature. What's required for those who are more advanced is different from those who are less advanced. But still, everyone has their duties to perform, the things that they should be doing, the things that they're not supposed to be doing. And practically everyone is doing what they're not supposed to be doing and not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And if you tell them that, they think that you're trying to control them. I'm going to think for myself. I have my, you know. Actually, people think exactly what the newspaper and the television tells them to think. And they think they're doing it themselves. It's just done in a way that convinces them that they're actually independent, although they're completely under the control of ignorance. And they think, well, that's their choice. As Prabhupada asked one lady who was in favor of abortion, so you think that you have a choice, either you can kill the child or you have a choice between what it was that killing the child or becoming dependent on the state. Do you think that's a good choice? And the lady said, yes, of course. So their intelligence has been stolen by illusion and they actually believe that they have good choices. They think they're free to choose. Or as Sridhar Maharaj, he was at Woodstock and he was giving a lecture on the four regular principles. If anyone has ever been to Woodstock, has anyone ever you've been to Woodstock? <laughs> You know, that there was all kinds of drunken people in the audience. They were all intoxicated. And he's giving a lecture on the four regular principles. <laughs> <laughs> so one man took a, he threw a beer can at him on the stage. And Sri Aramara looked at, picked it up and said, sorry, it's not my brand. <laughs> <laughs> So they think that's their choice. Brand X or brand Y. But actually their choice is either they can get out of ignorance or they're going to have to suffer in the material world in some species of life. And people may think we're sectarian, that we actually believe there's a God and that there's actually someone in control and that lust is not, you know, is not a good thing to cultivate. You're not free to do whatever you want with your body. Kill the child or let it live. It's all due to your mercy, whatever. If you get up on one side of the bed, you kill the child. Get up on the other side, <laughs> you decide to spare it for, you know. <laughs> it's all your choice. Some people want to be God, but unfortunately, they're under the control of the modes of nature. And they'll, they'll have to, they're responsible for whatever they do, whatever we do. Everything at every moment is being recorded by the super soul. And you can't get around it. So if people have knowledge, it's the only way that they can make sane decisions. And knowledge goes to different degrees and is revealed according to our sincerity to accept it. Or as it says in the second chapter, in the Bhagavad Gita at the end, in the purport, the second chapter, that one can obtain divine life in one moment, or not after millions of years, it's only a question of understanding and accepting the fact. So to understand it is not very easy. 
And to accept it is even more difficult. A lot of people hear the philosophy and they, it's not what they're looking for. You know, they come to the Hare Krishna movement, they find out that you're eternally a servant. And they, wow, this is the wrong movement. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> Wasn't what I was looking for in spiritual life. As I said, I met one person, I was just reading a book in Austin, Texas, a student, and I showed him the changing bodies, how the body is always changing, but the soul is always the same. And he actually understood what I was talking about. He says, wow, that's a fantastic philosophy. I never realized I was eternal, that's great. So I, I said, well, take the book and give a donation. But he gave me the book back and said, well, oh, you got a great philosophy, but I'm not interested in your book. Thanks a lot. He shook my hand and left. <laughs> so the power of avidya is quite strong, as we can all see. We all have experience. But there's a process out. As it says, pichadasi pape bya sarva papa krita maha. Uh, even if you're the most sinful of all sinners, when you're situated in the boat of transcendental knowledge, then you can easily cross over the ocean of material existence, or mis miseries. So the Krishna repeats that again and again in the Bhagavad Gita. Mamhi parta vipasvitya, yepi su papiyonaya, striyo vaisya sita sudras, tepi yanti puram gitim. Kim puna brahmanas punyas, bhakta rajashya sita, Anityamasukam lokam imam prapya bhajaswamam. That anyone who takes shelter of me, though they be of lower birth, women, vaishas, shudras, uh, they can obtain, still, they can obtain the supreme destination. How much greater than the saintly kings, the Brahmins, and the saint kings who are in this miserable temporary world engaged in devotional service to me? And what does he say? Manmana bhava mad bhakto, madhyaji imam namaskuru. Mamai Vaishasi Yuktaivam Atmana Matrainaha. Engage your mind always in thinking of me. Engage yourself in my in become my devotee. Worship me, offer your homage unto me. The result is that you'll come to me without fail. I promise you this because you're my very dear friend. So the process is the same for everyone. Think of hear about Krishna, think about you know, try to understand Krishna in truth try to think about Krishna, try to become Krishna's devotee, try to worship Krishna, try to serve him, try to follow his mission, serve in his mission. This is the same for everyone. And then one can become gradually purified. But the only impediment is we think, well, this is just one of the many alternatives I have in my life. I have so many other things I want to do. One of them is devotional service. And there are other things to do also. If we think that we have many alternatives and other people have many alternatives, then neither will take Krishna consciousness very seriously, nor will we be able to seriously convince anyone else to take it up seriously. Because we think, well, you're doing your thing. As they said, Vaishasika Guru, and he's stopping people on the street, and he asks them, and he says, I, I can tell you're a spiritual person. I can look into your eyes and tell you're a spiritual person. This is a spiritual book, I'm sure you'd appreciate it, because I can see you're a spiritual person. And what kind of spiritual activities do you do? So the person says, I play tennis. I knew you were spiritual. <laughs> so people are convinced what they're doing is actually quite important. It's like essential. <laughs> so if we think, oh, yeah, it, I mean, of course he's doing it to sell a book. But, you know, if we actually think, yeah, well, actually, I don't want to disturb you. <laughs> you have something good going on. You like what you're doing. So it's, as I said, it's evolved to the point where people are, they can imagine anything and they think it's valuable. They, they think it's true. I said the other day, and they were interviewing people on the campus in, in in America, one campus in, in Washington State. And the interviewer is saying that if I believe I'm a five foot six woman, Chinese woman, would you believe me? And the students was going, well, if you feel like that, then we have to accept it. 
Yeah, I mean, that's how crazy things have become. Whatever you imagine that, you know, for you it's true. And we have to honor it. We have to honor your craziness. So the material world exists like that. That's, for that's an extreme example, but everyone else is crazy too. We're thinking we're this body, which is also a delusion. But if we want to get out of it, then we have to realize that we're in a situation, just like nowadays people are realizing they might die. As I said the other day, one devotee, he had a serious illness, and the doctor said, I have to tell you, you know, I have bad news for you. So the doctor said, you're going to die. So the devotee turned to the doctor and said, I have bad news for you, you're also going to die. <laughs> 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 so with this coronavirus it just wakens up to the fact that we're in ignorance otherwise we wouldn't be afraid of it at all because we it's not that we wouldn't take precaution it's not that one is foolish but one would not be, one is fearless if he actually is out of ignorance there was this abhayam sattva sam shudira jnana yoga vyavyastiti that for one who's actually renounced the material concept of life better known as sannyasi, then there's abhayam as the first qualification. One becomes fearless. And then one acts simply to purify one's existence, cultivate spiritual knowledge. Therefore, the fact that we awakened up or there's some notification that there's danger, well, that's good. There's always danger. So it's good to be reminded that there's danger. Otherwise, we're going a long life thinking, well, maybe some people are in danger in Syria or somewhere, but <laughs> we're living in a civilized place. Only some unfortunate, few unfortunate people die. Or as I said the other day, they were, Prabhupada was in London and they were interviewing him and they said, Swamiji, why are so many people dying in India? So Prabhupada said, well, I've been in England, and as far as I've understood so far, that people die here also. Matter of fact, the death rate is about the same as in India, 100%. <laughs> so we shouldn't be so much disturbed by, well, we should be disturbed. We should become fearful, so we take shelter of Krishna, get out of our ignorance. Otherwise, just be fearful. Every living entity is fearful, but they don't know the solution. But at least we know what the solution is. And if the situation makes us fearful so that we take shelter of Krishna, like Queen Kunti, then it's very good. It's very auspicious. It's Krishna's mercy to us. And for everyone else, if some of them realize that this is not a very safe place to live in, then maybe they'll turn to Krishna consciousness and they'll also get some benefit from the situation. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Yes. So this verse says that uh, one can be uh, protected from the worst sin. So, Papa Kritu, aha. Yes. And uh, one will often ask, okay, uh, don't you also get sick? So uh, uh, illness is a result of sin okay so if i chant Hare krishna will i be protected from this virus so uh, it's a it's a frequent yeah, question yeah. The, the worst the fact that the body grows old becomes diseased and dies that's very programmed 
even the great saints have to go through the same thing. That's part of the material nature. It's not. As soon as you we get a material body, even if you get the body of Brahma, you have to die. That's just part of it. It comes along with the package. But as far as if, as it says, what is that verse? That both with the rising and the setting of the sun, ayu harati vaipum sam, udan narto jayanya yo, tasyarate, tasyarate yakshino nityam utma shloka vartaya. So both with the rising and the setting of the sun, everyone's days, lo- everyone's lifetime is lost, except for those who are glorifying Krishna. Because with it, and if one is, becomes a perfectly pure devotee, then at the end of this body, one gets eternal life. He doesn't die, he gets eternal life. And everyone else, their destination is unknown. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. Grandarai Shema Bhagavad Gita Kijai. Shila Prabhupada Kijai. Gor Pramananda Devo. <laughs>